Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second of our three title bouts on tonight's TFP5 Level Up card. And it's for the South African World Muay Thai Organization Championship of the Super Welterweight Division. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first the challenger tonight, fighting out of the blue corner with the blue trunks and weighing in at 66.67 kilograms with a record of 19 wins and 15 losses. He fights out of Brothers Combat Institute in George. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jean-Luc Ardendorf. And his opponent will be fighting out of the red corner, the defending champion, weighing in at 69.05 kilograms with an excellent record of four wins and a single loss. He fights out of Ty Hollex in Cape Town, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending WMO Super Welterweight Champion, Shane Deacon. Stepping up again, Shane Deacon defends his title tonight, or hopes to defend his title against Jean-Luc Ardendorf from George. Jean-Luc earned himself the shot in a title eliminator last round out, but he's up against a seriously tough opponent here in Shane Deacon. Shane made light work of his previous fight against Chester Kruger, did some serious damage to the body, Mark Tester up, and Chester's no slouch in this game either. That was so a this brutal be encounter, I remember, yeah. man. It was hardcore from the start. You know what I love about Shane Deacon? What music is he going to walk out to tonight? And it's always something chill. Yeah. He's a chill dude. He, he, the way he fights in the ring is also pretty chill. He's got that Thai style. Also just likes to walk forward, pick his shots. He is a southpaw as well. So it often like, you know, gets your opponents a bit riled up and they're not too sure what to do against the southpaw. And an absolute monster in the super welterweight division. Yeah. He cuts. He must be cutting quite a long way, but he's always re relatively fit. He's always in the gym. He's always sparring with his counterparts across town against other gyms. He trains a lot with Nido Gomba, who's going to be in our main event. But still, for him to make the weight that he made yesterday, 69.05, 
at the height that he stands, I yeah. don't understand how that happens. And I mean, Shane doesn't walk around that heavy, actually. Like, you know, he probably only has to cut down in his camp about three or four K. So he's normally walking around in the light 70s. It's not a big deal for him to cut down. You know, he's comfortable getting to this weight as well. And I think that shows in his performances that he still has all that power without needing to do any weight drops and cuts. You know, that's also the thing is when they decide to start doing this professionally and get paid, being three or four kilos over the weight limit is getting paid to train, not getting paid to win fights. And that's what fighters need to understand that in the fight game, especially at a professional level, you're not paid to win, you're paid to stay in the gym. That's how it works. And Shane is a shining example of that. Not a big cut that he had to make, but still a monster in this division against Jean-Luc Ardendorf, who won a title eliminator to be here tonight. You can see a big height difference here. We know that Shane likes to work from the outside, use big teeth. He's got a lot of sweeps. You know, we keep joking with him about trying to attach a moniker to, to his ring name or give him a ring name, and he just won't decide on one. So every time I see him, I've got a new one. Anything that rhymes with Deacon. Sweeping, teeping, sneaking, freaking Deacon. <laughs> Shane the pain trainer, which is the one that would stay. Shane the train. Train with Shane will remain the same. He's also an instructor at Tarholics himself. Yeah, assistant crew to Nick Radley. I think the only one that gives him any lip in the gym is me. Well, you're bigger. Yeah, and I'm old. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, veteran. And that's how you got this job today. Being old. No, just giving lip. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the second of our three title fights. We just saw Shane Deacon's gym mate, Ishaq Ibrahim, successfully defend his title the first time. This is Shane Deacon's first defense, potentially. And uh, we're moving into the last of our Pro-Am fights. Three rounds of three minutes. And then we move into the Pro segment straight away after this fight, where it's going to be... Anthony Melo, Pride Fighting Academy, up against Tabo Chauke of Mamalodi Warriors, and Nido Gomba up against Martin Achebe of Kenya. So you can already see that, that big height differential here, Shane working off the teeth. I think Bajan Luke needs to be careful not to leave himself too exposed because he is going to have to take a few shots to get inside. Maybe look to catch a kick, go for a sweep, make Shane think a little bit about, you know, be throwing wantonly. If he, if he keeps allowing him to, to, to just throw kicks and teep him, then you know, Shane's gonna get into a real comfortable position here. There we go, nice catch. Got to attack that leg. <laughs> and I know Shane doesn't like that. He's the guy who's normally doing that, you know, in the gym, in the ring when he's fighting. Already a little bit of uh, frustration and countering, but still relatively calm. You see the way he squared off there, that's what we needed to see from Paul. Maybe just like, you know, tapping into the side set. John Luke is fighting like he's fighting for a title. It's good to see him come in here and give Shane Deacon something to think about. Yeah, I think he just needs to be careful. You know, he's dropping his hands sometimes when he's trying to defend the kicks. You don't want to be eating a really big kick because Shane's got powerful kicks on him. So much power is generated from his hips moving forward with the kicks, especially with those teeps. He's got such a slick, classic Muay Thai style joy to watch. Oh, he teeps him off. That's why you get one of the first things you learn is to move the teeth of the center line. So if you do catch it, you don't get pushed off. See, like that, you can't be going for the low kicks in case Shane decides to switch it up and bring it to the head. Ardendorf has got to get himself off the ropes, though. This is not the place you want to get caught against a champion with the levers that Shane Deacon has. Yeah, and he's very comfortable in the clinch, working on those knees. Possibly, uh, yeah, he's corner, corner for a sweep. And we know he likes a sweep game. jean as well needs to make sure he doesn't gas himself out here. It's only the first round. He's doing well to catch the kicks. Uh, maybe not as effective off that. I think for him, it's going to be a little bit difficult to sweep Shane, but a, a nice catch release and, and a counter from there. It's a good way to go about it. Oh, massive knee from Shane. He drops my long like that. I feel John Luke might have done. John Luke's in a bad spot right now on the ropes. He's standing there and eating Ooh. big shots. Shane using a lovely step through knee there on the left side and just planted right in the solar plexus. And that could be the undoing in this first round for John Luke. Needs to recompose, maybe get out the, the pocket just for a little bit. 
He's got 15 seconds left in this round. Oh. Another big knee. That one hurt. You could tell the grimace That's from Jean-Luc's Jean face. He doesn't mind. His hands are low. He's not afraid of, of Jean-Luc's power. Slipping his knee, elbows in. The pads come off his arm here as well. Touch of the gloves in the round. Shane lifts his hands. One really gets the impression that Jean-Luc Arendorf right here, right now, is having to punch above his weight class. The size difference between the two guys. How much would you have said Shane Deacon rehydrated from his 69.05 to what he is right now? Yeah, I didn't actually chat to him much about you know the rehydration because, as I said, he sort of stays in this position anyway. But he's probably got on another two or three Ks, whereas for Jean-Luc, even if he packed it on, it doesn't help him to... to make the differential in, in power to his size ratio, you know? If anything, it slows him down, potentially. For sure. Especially when he's the guy that needs to get on the inside and change because he's picking him apart and throwing big kicks. But I mean, as you say, he didn't do too badly. You know, there's times where, for instance, he got in there and throws that overhand, comes in with some nice punches, One and he's catching some good kicks. So, you know, the technique's there. You kind of get the impression that if he's going to operate on the inside, being the smaller guy, he's not going to out physically maneuver Shane Deacon, but he's got to make it ugly on the inside so that Shane doesn't get into a rhythm where he can control yeah, the situation. Yeah, he's definitely got to, got to disrupt Shane's techniques. You know, the catches work well for that, good teeps to the leg, for instance. But I think what we're going to start seeing now is, you know, Shane's a traditionally slow starter, and uh, we might start seeing him quickly open up here and look for a, maybe a big finish, start bringing the power early on. He's got three minutes to unload here. Looks for a high teep. Smell the feet. He's just, you know, he's swinging with this, complete disregard for Jean-Luc at the moment. Yeah, he really isn't worried about what's being thrown back at him. And, of course, I'm not sure how many times Jean-Luc could have fought without shin pads. So this is the first time he might be tasting that, you know, that shin coming right through. You can see his body's vaulted up. No, a bit of background Breathing. information on Jean-Luc. Armed response officer is his daytime job. And he's got a lot of experience in the junior ranks and the amateur ranks. But this is a whole different ball game. Yeah, Shane's is one of those, you know, he's like a, a cloud that just smothers you. Looks at the guy, he's just able to walk down his opponent and just pretty much at will. Body shots, knees. You saw some good damage he did in the first round with those shots. A whiff of the foot past Jean-Luc's face. Shane, That's a Shane big walks knee. in with a big knee and elbow, sneaky inside. You see a little bit of respect. He could have actually dropped in there, but he actually gave him the count. So a minute and 40 to go in this round. A minute and 30 when they get back to it. Such a thudding elbow that Shane Deacon threw at Jean-Luc Arendorf. It really, his whole body shuddered, not just the head. Huge breath he's trying to take now just to recompose. There's enough time here for Shane to do some serious damage still there. Jean-Luc not looking very comfortable in the clinch. Inside elbow. Those teeps as well, you know, to the body. Gets a knee to the glove. Lots of respect shown from Shane though. You know, he's not looking to do serious damage and finish him when he's got in, in that position. It's good sportsmanship. Arendorf is shaking his head like he's almost thinking about bottling yeah, he's, it. He's puffing and I mean he's taking some serious damage here. But he's got a lot of heart so he says he'll go back to it. Opens up with a big swinging punch. But Shane just lining him up here looking for the finish. Big knees on the outside. It's amazing how he can bring his knee up so effortlessly up onto the right hand side like a punch. Yeah, I taught him off. <laughs> Big inside elbow from Shane as Jean-Luc rattled. I was hoping the, the referee would jump in there. It's turning into a beatdown here. and Shane Deacon's first defense is looking a lot to be a success. Yeah, I think that might, you might call it there, but that elbow definitely had his eyes rolling for a bit. Ten seconds to go. It's almost sadistic. The way that Shane Deacon's dancing around, asking Jean-Luc to come out. Jean-Luc showing a lot of heart here, though. Shane dancing around, having fun in there. So yeah, as a coach, what do you Jean say to Jean-Luc? What do you say to Jean Keep going. <laughs> do keep, what you keeping, can. Keeping, you know, keep taking these shots. 
Um, I think again, we need to start thinking of about some technique. You know, he's behind on the card quite a bit now because he's been dropped in both rounds. Um, what he needs to really do is look for some big sweeps. You know, he might he might not get the victory here, but the, you know, there's a lot that can still be done in terms of getting some good experience out of the rounds. Now, here's the thing. Yes, it is a South African title fight, but it is a pro-am fight. At some stage, somebody from the corner might have to start considering that another round of reckless damage is not going to be worth Jean-Luc Ardendorf's career going down the stretch. His health, his head, his heart. You know, sometimes you might have to think of saving the fighter from himself. Yeah, Sean, a lot of these strikes aren't just, you know, punches that are like deep thuds. There's like some sharp knees coming in. It's knees you know, to the body's head. body's also taking damage, which is making him tired and opening him up for, you know, exposing him to those big shots. Um, I guess it's always down to the coach, but at the same time, you don't want to pull the rug out from under him. If he's saying, I'm ready to go, you want to give him that opportunity to at least, you know, keep putting that pressure on, keep getting that experience. And if but, every uh, fighter was allowed to decide their own destiny, there'd be a lot more bad cases of brain damage running sure. around, you know. It's, it's up to the coaches to save a fighter from himself. But we'll see what Jean-Luc Ardendorf can pick up in round number three. Actually started this round off a little bit better than the last round. You know, he's looking a little bit fresher, but as these shots start to come in, Shane's playing around with switches, you know, he's looking super comfortable in there. He's got a cut himself, I'm not too sure where that came from. Wow. Little oh well. jabs coming out, big tip to the body, flying Albert to the top of the head, John Luke taking shots in the knee, I mean from the knee. Big spinning back first. Got to get out that corner now. Stuck here, Shane working. Oi, oi, a big double elbow. Again, rocked him. John Luke needs to at least make sure he keeps his hand up. His elbows are, and then Shane drops him. And you know how proud Deacon is going to be of that cut to his eye. Shiner is going to walk around with as well. Facebook profile update picture coming. So they've called it here, I think. Shane Deacon successfully defends his title against Rano Gardendorf. Technical performance, unloading, big shots, big knees, lots of hard punches and kicks, and of course those big teeps starting out in the first round, head hunting. Well done to Jean Luc, showed a lot of heart to be in there, taking that punishment. Still young, got a long road ahead of him. At 20 years old, I think the right call made there. And Shane Deacon celebrates defending his title. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this belt, of this bout to get a hamper from our sponsors in Jared, as well as the title, the South African Muay Thai Championship in the Super Welterweight Division to be handed over by Clint Walters. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to an end at one minute and 10 seconds of round number three. Declaring your winner by technical knockout, and still, the WMO South African Super Welterweight Champion, Shane Deacon.